When it comes to laser engraving photographs, we typically have two types of photographs that we want to work with. One is a continuous tone photo, the other is a black and white photo. The continuous tone photos are ideal for fine materials such as anodized aluminum or engraving plastic, where the black and white image is good for coarse product or porous products such as wood or black granite or, or glass. Let's take a look at both types of photographs. If you take a look on the screen, you'll actually see that I've got two photographs selected. The color photograph is our continuous tone photograph. The image on the right here is our black and white photograph. The continuous tone photo is called a continuous tone because ultimately if we take a look at the photograph, it's very hard to see where one color starts and one color stops. So we'd like to refer to this photo as continuous tone where the tones just run into each other and they continue on so that we get a nice good color looking photograph where you can, where the blends between the colors are very consistent. Now the way that we print this photograph is we use a half toning method where we actually, what the half toning method does, it actually tries to take the continuous tone and break them down into actually into a dot pattern. When you print this photograph, you'll actually be printing a series of dots and it looks like a line screen um, where if you sort of you if you sort of zoomed in on it and you can see this on if you're sort of looking at a magazine or a printed newspaper you'll see an actual screening process goes on and if you've ever printed a continuous tone photo at a lower resolution you'll notice that you can actually start to see the screen pattern appear in the photograph so typically when we actually print a continuous tone photo using a half toning method we like to use a 600 DPI or a 500 DPI printing resolution because this will give us our best looking image. Now, normally what I suggest with a continuous tone image is not to work with the color, I'll actually come in and convert it to grayscale. Now when I say gray, this is what I'm referring to as a grayscale image here where even though this theoretically is a black and white image, it's actually a series of grays. And there's 256 shades of gray in this photo and basically what we're doing here is we're reproducing those using the half toning process. Another type of photo is a black and white photo. This photo is called black and white because all we have is just a black or a white dot. There are no shades of gray in the image. Now typically what we would do is we would convert our grayscale image into a black and white. So the steps that we use are bitmaps, mode, grayscale, which is our normal way that we would take a continuous tone uh, to print it. Then I'm going to go one step further. I'm actually going to come in and go bitmaps, mode, and I'm going to go black and white. And you notice here, for those that are interested, this is a one-bit image. A grayscale image is an eight-bit, so the amount of colors are really only two in black and white, where they're 256 in gray. I get a preview window on the, on the left here and zoom around. Now by default the the conversion method is half tone. You can use half tone if you want. If you want, you normally would probably use a line and somewhere around a 45 or a 30 degree type. Um, and then you may want to come somewhere around uh, oh maybe around 100 lines per inch. You may have to fool around with this a little bit, but ultimately and again this is more just a function of the zoom process here just before you can get an actual image. So if I zoom out a little bit, again you can see that you actually have a rep representation of the image on the right hand side here. Now normally what we would normally do in our, and what all everybody in the industry talks about is we would actually use the Jarvis, the Stuckey or the Floyd Steinberg method. So if I click on Jarvis, you notice here that the image now is converted to just black or white. And I've lost a certain amount of detail in the image because I've lost the small subtle shades of gray that would be going on in the face here. And this image on the right certainly looks a lot harsher than the image on the left. And this goes back to the premise that I like to use is that when we are working with a coarse material or, or a material that's very porous, we actually want to throw away detail to bring in more detail. 
and this is an oxymoron, but really what we're doing is we're trying to remove, if we try to laser too much detail, then all our image will look like is a blob. So what we want to try to do is get rid of some of those steps in between and either make an area black or an area white, and it will actually show better detail in a more porous product such as wood or glass. I can actually adjust the intensity here, and you can see that the conversion will adjust depending on how my intensity works. If I say OK, there you go. Now the biggest problem that a lot of people have is they'll take a look at that photograph and go, ooh, that's not what I want. The quality is not good. Well, the quality is there. This is really just a function of the zoom. So if I click on the zoom, and if I start to zoom in, you notice how the detail is getting better. And if I went into, say, 310%, you notice now that I'm getting an actual better representation of the way the image looks. So remember, when we're working with our photographs for laser engraving, we're going to be working with two different types of photos. One, a continuous tone, which we would normally use for our fine materials, such as anodized aluminum, or an air diffusion black and white image that we would normally use for coarse products, such as wood.